Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this week, it's time to start talking about something that happens in armour modelling. If you build armour, um, specifically German armour, you'll get to a point where you need to sit down and talk about Zimmeret. Now, Zimmeret comes in many different forms, many different shapes, sizes, and with that, there are many different methods on applying Zimmeret. And there are ways to go about Zimmeret too. There are different ways of applying it to the model. And in this video, we're going to talk about all the different ways that we can do that. So as I say, Zimmeret, let's start at the basics. We were discussing in a recent video about how the inspiration for this series, the beginner, beginner's guide to armour modelling, um, sort of come from the Tony Greenland way of doing things. So let's jump straight in with a kit from the, unbelievably, the 1980s. Um, which surprises me, but this this uh, this Tamiya late Tiger One is actually from the 80s, believe it or not, albeit 1989. But you know, still that is the 80s. So this is an old kit. Does require Zimmeret. Says it in the instructions, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there you go. So uh, Tamiya on the ball there, as usual. Use some putty with a. Uh, Spatula. What have we got here? Five mil. That is the um Yeah, so they're doing it, it's basically the sort of screwdriver method. So you put the putty around the turret and then you just kind of go in making the lines horizontal lines. Now this kit has no zimmer included. And um, I've got a set of resin Zimmeret from Cavalier models, which is almost as old as the kit itself. Uh, so this isn't something you can buy anymore, but you'll see going forward as we have a look at these kits I've got here that there's other alternatives to that these days. Now, for what it is, not a bad kit for its day. Um, needs a bit of work, and we're going to do a bit of work. You might be able to see in the box here. Smooth sides on the um, sides of the hole, and this is where the Zimmeret's going to go sides of the turret, Zimmeret's going to go on that as well. If you think about any flat spots that, access, that is accessible at, um, well, you know, a person could reach, that's where the Zimmeret's going to go. So, we should probably talk about what Zimmeret is. Uh, Zimmeret is a anti-magnetic paste that was applied to German vehicles from around December 1943 uh, to September 1944. Now, it really tends to come in, you start seeing it in November, as early as November 43 in some cases, and then it does run on, um, it does pretty much stop when it says in September 1944. I mean, it really does stop. Once they stop applying it, it it's no longer on the vehicles. But obviously you see vehicles all the way up to the end of the wall with Zimmeret on them because they've obviously been made in the production run when Zimmeret was applied. So it was done at the factory, uh, some tanks were overhauled as well. Uh, the, the classic is the Ferdinand uh, with its um, amazing debut at Kursk, uh, basically then being turned into the elephant, anything that was left. And as part of that upgrade where a cupola was put on, a few other different things, about a, a machine gun, uh, they also applied Zimmeret. So there you would find a vehicle that you would also find as a Ferdinand, it would not have Zimmeret, but as an elephant, it would have Zimmeret. So, Interesting cases like crop up all through the Second World War. There's a number of different patterns, um, usually specific to vehicles. So the Panther has a kind of square pattern. So it's it's vertical lines and horizontal lines, which create squares. You've got the waffle pattern that you'd see on things like Sturmgeschütz, and then you've got like the Tigers and the King Tigers tended to have vertical rows of a certain width of um, line so for instance you know you'd have vertical rows with the line being about as wide as that all the way along so it would just work around the turret in rows uh, columns sorry like that so 
that's the kind of I won't get bogged down in the in the reason why. Uh, ultimately, it was a German idea uh, to defend against a weapon that the Germans had. No one else really used the weapons that the Germans were fearing, which is what they used, which was magnetic mines or anti-tank mines that would you know lock onto the side of the vehicle. There were people that had them, I think all, both sides had them, both the, the Allies and, and the uh, Soviet side, but they weren't really using them in the way the Germans fought, hence why they abandoned it. So it was only a short-lived thing, but unfortunately, the Germans being the Germans in the Second World War, always pesky, uh, pesky, always an issue for modelers in the 20th century, and uh, Zimmer is, is just another one thing that we've got to worry about, along with ROM and R -R RAL colours, uh, different variants, etc, etc. Um, so, Zimmer does crop up in armour modelling, and it does hit quite a number of German vehicles that people tend to like. So really, for instance, if we take the um, initial, or Porsche, if you like, turret of the King Tiger. For instance, there's not really any of those apart from the uh, the production, uh, the prototype one that's at Bovington that didn't have Zimmer it. So you're stuck then. If you want to do a Porsche King Tiger, you've got to you've got to really put Zimmer on it. Um, same with the Tigers. In le people do stretch this rule. I see it online all the time. People are, are desperately stretching for. Oh, I want to build a pant for A, but I'm going to build the one that was built in, in October 1943 that didn't have Zimmeret. And you just think, oh, you know, just stick some Zimmeret on it. It's not that, you don't need to worry so much. It's not that much of an issue. And I'm going to show you here, with a number of builds as we go forward, it's going to be split up with other things, otherwise we'll all lose our mind, me included. Um, we're going to cover a, a whole load of uh, Zimmereted vehicles, and... Um, hopefully cover nearly every every type of Zimmerit that we need to worry about and the ways to go about it. Some are very easy, some are a bit more labour intensive, ultimately none of them are really difficult, they just seem a little bit daunting. So back to this kit. This is an old kit, I picked it up very cheap, so um, it came with this as second hand and um, I just so happened, uh, being the lucky chap that I am, had a set of uh, Fruly Modelismo tracks all ready to go, all ready assembled. They were painted, so I stripped them. So we got them ready for this build. So we're also going to look at metal tank tracks when we cover this build, uh, which is something I haven't done yet, mainly for price. Oh, you know, I'd use them on every build, but yeah, when th these tracks, there's not much going on there. You know, it's two sets of metal tracks. They're more expensive than most kits you put them on. And that's just the tracks. Uh, we've got a metal barrel, um, tiger barrels. I don't know what's going on, but you know, you try and find one. So this is left over from a dragon kit. Uh, it's got the right dimensions, however we're going to have to cut it considerably somewhere in the middle here to make it fit, but it, it, it's the right length. Sometimes you, you get barrel length becomes a bit of an issue. You might be able to see there that we're going to need to cut it off back sort of here, like that. We'll measure that up at the time, and I do somehow happen to have the old muzzle brake from the Dragon Kit as well. So there we go, that is... Um, that is this kit, but that's not why we're here. So we've got photo etch that I'm going to chuck back in, and we're going to have just a quick look at this Zimmeret. So, I need to work out how to open this now. Whoop. Well, it turned out it was just a bag, so that was easy enough. Um, so, what we get here is resin Zimmeret. So, we haven't dealt with resin before. Resin in armour modelling is not quite as uh, widespread as it would be in, say, aircraft modelling. Uh, we do get the odd thing, so uh, for instance here, you can get a tank Ooh. in resin. It looks very much like a Dalek or something, something very strange. I wonder if anyone knows what this is. Uh, but yes, yeah, so you can get fully resin models. This is completely cast in one, well, two, the turret. Um, we also get stowage, I suppose, used quite a lot in resin. Um, one of the main things you'll find cropping up as resin in armour modelling is uh, heads, hands for figures, that sort of thing. But there's also a call to use it uh, for Zimmeret. Now, the reason for that is you can make an extremely thin sheet using resin, and it carries very fine detail. So what we've got here is pre-moulded detail already on the actual piece. Now, we can see how thin this is. It's see-through. Uh, 
it's showing through the instructions as you can see now it's very fine very nice so good points of resin in fact there isn't really many downsides but the, the good sides of resin is very easy to add damage it's very easy to get a very natural look to it so it's not regimented of what I mean by that I mean it doesn't look too um, similar we're getting to other ways of having Zimmerit in a second which does show that one of the downsides I'm struggling here to actually cut this off now we can see what we're dealing with so it's quite simple you just cut around it it's very thin you can almost use scissors to get around it and then use a knife and a and a ruler and once you cut out all your bits with um, super thin super glue I suppose actually you could even use PVA uh, to give you a bit of movement so you can offer it up to the flat spots of the vehicle and then actually fix it with uh, some super glue very thin super glue might be the way to do this and as you can see we've got the raised uh, raised, raised parts for the mounts of for the side skirts there which is a nice feature and this is a good thing especially with Cavalier is that all the parts are already on so you, you know you don't have to go and glue all these bits on or make them fit around on the model the downside is you do have to cut them off of the model I think certainly these are going to be molded on to the back plate so we're going to have to get rid of those and we also get the tricky parts now with a tiger it is uh, well known that the mantlet is a bit of a problem because it's it's a hell of a shape really if we're going to be honest I mean it's a very complicated shape as you can see there all these uh, raised parts and recessed parts so they've actually already given us so they've already given us the actual part this is presumably the kit part uh, and they've just applied the zimmer to it um, so hopefully it does actually look like it in fact because that's the back so it looks like that should just fit no problem we do unfortunately have to cut you know some of this out but it's not difficult resin's very soft and a bit sanding you soon get there so that's one type of zimmer that's a way to go about it uh, this is a bit old school as I say with it being cavalier uh, but you, you get attack now attack or A-T-A-K uh, which do the same thing it's basically just a sheet of resin uh, and if you can get hold of it they do have uh, kits for tiger and, and all sorts of different things you can also do etch metal that's the one thing we're not going to look at here um, I don't feel as though it's appropriate really it's it's very rigid it's very difficult it's um, it's a quick and easy alternative but ultimately it's um, it's a bit of a problem. Now we do have a mid tiger as well. This is the late tiger. I'm also going to do the Tamiya mid tiger again, utilising the other set of tracks I've got. And for that, we're going to use a different method. Okay, so next up is making your own Zimmerit. So uh, there's numerous ways you can go about that. Uh, you can use milliputs, uh, which is a bit of an old school technique, and um, you roughen up the surface that you're going to put it on, and you, you spread it thin like that. And then with water, you make it very, uh, very well as thin and flat as you can then you imprint the pattern onto it right so there's two types of milliput generally this one's actually okay the yellow gray the standard but then you've got the super fine as well which is a bit more it goes down a bit easier so it might, it's something to um play around with i have used this on this uh but you can also there's a million different ways to do it i mean uh one of the easiest ways is to use a like no more nails type thing it's almost like a a um, water-based plaster or a water-based glue it's um it, you can put it on very thin and you can imprint uh, the details into it with a saw blade so you would um, you would spread it on you would spread it on there nice and thin and then with a saw blade you just kind of go along horizontally and then up to make the line and then horizontally down horizontally up horizontally down as you go along and it will make a very fine um, zimmeret pattern it won't you, you won't be able to get any thickness or depth to it but it will make a very fine pattern and it's it's almost perfect for the uh, quite a lot of the patterns you see on mid-production tigers so that's something to look at now on this one as I was saying I used the Revel Plasto and all I did was worked in very small sections because it dries quite fast so for instance here I will have done this bit to there I would have spread it on, um, is, is sort of 
thin as I can and then with Tamiya Extra Thin I just um, blended that in so it went down smooth. I think I was using an old paintbrush just to get it level and then with a screwdriver, in fact, this very screwdriver here, um, I went in and just went like this. You know. And it was tedious but it was also fun at the same time because this was the first time I managed to actually do it. So I didn't find any problem with it. Um, this was one of my models 2015 uh, coming back to the hobby. Uh, properly in armour and um, my partner bought me the Tamiya Elephant as a surprise at Christmas, a very good surprise, expensive kit so it was brilliant to get that. I was straight into the um, down the hole of Zimmerit because obviously I had to have Zimmerit and this is how I came up with it and you know I had it on Christmas I think it was built and finished uh, second week of January, you know, I just cracked straight into it. It was a lovely little project, lovely little thing. I was very happy to get it, and it was um, a nice surprise. Now, some areas of this are better than others. You'll notice that it starts to get a bit better around the back, sort of here, for instance, and certainly there, because these are the things I was doing last, because these were separate. Um, also, I'm very proud of the unique pattern there. I think that's brilliant. Um, for you, you, um, <laughs> I don't mean that like you know. I think I've done brilliant. I th what I mean is, I think for anyone that's perfectly acceptable. It's really good. There's no problem with that. I mean, it's it's thin, it's smooth. Well, it's not smooth. Sorry, it's it's thin and it's in scale is what I'm trying to say. And we've got the pattern around these um, bolt heads here as well, which is a kind of a unique pattern to the elephant. They sort of went around them. Uh, all the way around. Same there on the vision slit there. So I was really happy with that. Of course, you know, we've got silver um, tow cables and, you know, there's a few basic parts to this build, but that's not what we're really looking at. We're really looking at the Zimmeret. So that's something that's very achievable. Never be scared to do it on your own. Um, just practice. There's not a lot we've got to worry about. You know, you're not going to ruin it, if you, especially if you're using water-based ones. The, the, the best way, that's probably the best way to start is with some of those water-based uh, sort of DIY products because if you don't like it you can just wash it off there's no problem uh, this would be a little bit more difficult to, to wash off because it, it actually etches into the plastic with the plastic glue and this is a pattern I think it goes the other way on this bit yeah it does it goes a different way all along down this side as per the reference it's quite a famous vehicle this is the one that ended up at Bovington and it's also in the Aberdeen training ground um, that's where it lives, but it came over to Bovington for a bit. I managed to see it. And that's what this model depicts. So that's another way of doing Zimmeret. And then following on from that, another option is moulded on Zimmeret. Now, uh, you're kind of limited to kits on this. Um, this is a Dragon model. The trouble with this is, it, it, well, it is available. Uh, this is the Daz Verk model. Daswerk Sturm Geschütz 3 G or Sturm Habits 42 with Zimmerit. Um, plagued with problems. Uh, we are going to build this kit. Well, I say plagued with problems, it depends what you want to do. I have been in touch with um, the Stugman himself, uh, Panzermeister, just to get his idea on, on what he thinks can be done with this. Because you know you can't. You can. It's best just to add, if someone knows, there's no point, you know, uh, doing it yourself if someone's already tread that ground. So, uh, it turns out pretty much most of the things you would need are in the box for this, actually. And you can just build it straight out of the box uh, for doing a certain type. Now, if you want to do the ones that are depicted on the box, you do need different uh, return rollers. And there's a few problems. They've basically mixed up the two factories, um, is what's happened with this kit. You've got, and, and the problem is, this Zimmeret pattern comes from the factory that this model does not depict. So, I mean, Dragon have all the parts, they could have just put it in, but they just mixed it up. However, there's always exceptions to the rule, and there are Sturmgeschütz Freeze that did have a number of um, different parts on them late in the war. So we're just going to go for one that hasn't got any markings, basically. And I'm going to do the... Um, the Stu H42, so we're going to do it with the uh, shorter gun, the howitzer gun. Anyway, 
we're looking at the Zimmeret and there you can see the waffle pattern is really nicely done and there's no problem with this in fact I think all the parts that have Zimmeret that need Zimmeret have it uh, there's one hatch on the back I think that they don't give you Zimmeret and it probably should have so we can try and work out uh, how to do that uh, we've got it down the side of the hole as well as you can see in there so uh, it's really nice now the problem with moulded on Zimmeret is you're you're really there's nowhere to go with it really you either um, you either get what you get and it's good or if there's problems with it you can't really edit it you, you know you can't I suppose you can sand it off and redo it but it's an awful lot of work uh, luckily for us this is actually very well done it looks very natural probably one of the best Zimmerets Dragon actually did to be honest um, so if you're interested I would grab this kit well you can because it's about it's under 40 pounds uh, you get um, Lincoln Lake cracks so there's no DS rubbish and we do have the drilled out holes that I can't remember I did know the name of this this will be relevant in a model that you probably will have seen by the time you see this video uh, but anyway they're drilled out I've just built a Tamiya kit where these weren't drilled out and I drilled them out uh, I'm talking about that hole there on the edge of the track it's actually drilled out so there we go um, a good little kit a good little kit uh, but it does need a bit of corrections, unless you don't care and then you just build it out of the box, you know, if you don't worry. Um, it'd be a lovely model just to assemble. But we'll take you through this one and we're going to build this as an accurate model because I've got a, like I said, I've got a correction sheet from um, Panzermeister, so it's very, uh, very thankful to Evan for letting me have that. Uh, so there we are, moulded on Zimmeret. So let's look at the next option. So back again. Uh, with another Daz Work model. Now this is a get Daz Work of doing some brilliant stuff. Uh, you know they're filling the market with things that model is. And what we've got here is the brilliant Tacom Panther A series, and they've given it to us without the Zimmeret, without the interior, without any of the complications at a very good price. Again, around the thirty pound mark. In fact, I got this from Hannans. So I paid full RRP and the whole package I think was about £45 and I got the Zimmerich sheet. So what does work have done here, Pant for A's, right let's, let's do a little bit on the Pant for A. Um, every Pant for A had Zimmerit. Well not quite. Um, this is a tank that you'll find people will get thinking I want to build a Pant for uh, and I see this on the forums all the time. Facebook, I mean, not forums. Forums are dead, didn't you know? Um, so, uh, when you're talking about panthers, people go, oh, I got a panther A. Oh, it's meant to have Zimmeret. Ah, right. And then they tend to either not build it, <laughs> build it without the Zimmeret, or trawl through reference and find out that a handful of panthers didn't have Zimmeret. And that's the case. And you can build one of those. And there was. Uh, Potentially, it looks like it's up to 50. You, you have to look at the Panf, uh, Panzer Tracks book, really, to, to get an idea of, of what's going on. But if we say there's between 25 and 50 vehicles, uh, there's one famous one that was photographed. It's got a name. I do forget the name, I'm, I'm afraid, but it's, it's not really relevant here. The, if you want to find out, there are tanks, there are Panther A's that did not have Zimmeret. And if you're desperate to do those, then you can. So you can do a Panther A without the Zimmeret. That makes this a very nice package because you don't have to buy or worry about adding the Zimmeret. If you do want to add the Zimmeret, the option you get is this is one of the options. So this is Dazwerk's uh, version of resin Zimmeret. And what it is, again, like this is a repackaged Takum kit. This is a repackaged Attack kit. Now, Attack make sheets of resin Zimmeret. And they're very good. They're, they're really very good. Um, much like the Cavalier models. Basically, Cavalier models don't really aren't really around now. And Attack are doing the same thing. As you can see there, just like the Cavalier models, we've got the difficult parts, which you wouldn't be able to put the sheet on, so they've already done it. You've got two different types of mantlet. You've got the toolboxes at the back. And anything else that might be a little bit tricky, or cast in resin. There you go, the um, machine gun 
I forget what that's called. Whatever it would be. The machine gun thing. Help me out in the comments. Uh, so that's what goes on the uh, front glacius plate where the machine gun is. Uh, and then we've got the Zimmeret here, which is on a backing sheet. And again, it's on very thin resin and you just cut around. You can then sand it back a little bit if you want. Where you've got holes, you just keep sanding it on a flat surface until the holes appear. Although, you know, depending on the thickness, it probably isn't an issue. Uh, this sort of goes under the, um, behind the running gear. There's the iconic front section of the tank, sides of the turret, again the rear section all cut out ready to go. Should be straightforward. So we will be having a look at that. Um, word of warning, if you do want to get hold of this stuff, um, I jumped on this, I'm way ahead of myself, I'm not going to be building this for a little bit. Uh, but they were selling fast on Hannant and I was tracking the numbers and you know it was like five in stock and then it was three in stock and then it was one in stock so I just pulled the trigger and I got the last one it was in stock. I don't know what the um, restock is like. Uh, I know initially when they released the Panthers um, they released the Zimmerit with them and it sold out very quickly and it took a long time for the restock so I was watching the restock so just bear in mind it you know certainly in the UK at the minute I think if there's a model you want, um, I don't know if I don't know if I'd be waiting. Uh, you know, I think just just grab it while you can um, and hope for the best. So we've got another bit of Zimmer to look at. Now uh, this is the last bit. So you know, if this is being a bit exhausting for you or, or doing your head in, then we're getting there now. So don't worry. Now this is perhaps one of the best packages. Uh, in 135th I've ever come across to be honest um, I haven't built these kits so you know I I'm talking in the blind but I've seen build reviews they go together fine so I'm certain it's going to be great this is the Porsche turret which is, as we know if, we, if anyone follows the tank museum videos or does any research you'll know that that's incorrect it's more or less an initial turret and then a production turret for the sake of argument, this is a Porsche turret and then it's the Henschel turret. So these vehicles, apart from the prototype, which you can't really build anyway because it's, it's got a different turret and it's got... Let's not get into that. Um, this is... All of these had Zimmeret. So we have to add Zimmeret. So, Hobby Boss, being Hobby Boss, they've pretty much done every version of King Tiger you could need. And I've got them, so I've got two Henschels and I've got this one, oh, they always have difficult boxes. I've got this one Porsche Tiger, and you tend to get one or the other. So in the Porsche and the uh, uh, the normal Henschel type, you get Zimmeret. So that's what you get. Whereas in the um, one that is doesn't have Zimmeret, what's it say here? The uh, February 1945 production, which I've actually unlocked the secrets of now. I didn't know when I was doing the review, but it's actually quite a quite a specific vehicle that models. It's got it's to do with the 18 tooth sprocket and the um, every every link in the track. It's not it's not the same as these. So these tracks have one link where the sprocket goes and one link where it doesn't. So it's missing. You know, it's got uh, I can't remember how many teeth it does have, but anyway. Um, on each link, the sprocket misses a link. So it'd be a sprocket on the link, a connecting link, and then a sprocket again. Whereas the other tiger that I'm talking about and getting far too in depth about <laughs> has a sprocket on each link. So it's different tracks, but they're very late. That's what I'm trying to get at. So this kit, as you can see, comes with individual link tracks. Fantastic. It comes with Zimmeret. It's got pretty much every detail you could ever possibly want. It's got slide moulded technology, lots of spares, it's fantastic. Great big barrel there, look, in one piece. No issue there. Wonderful stuff. Um, now, uh, those other King Tigers that I'm talking about, um, if you don't get Zimmeret, you get a metal turned barrel, which separately is actually £15, and it has a resin muzzle brake uh, cover to it. So, fantastic kits. And I bought this off of Creative Models a couple years ago, £18. Unbelievable, it really is. So, getting into the uh, nuts and bolts of it, the same thing happens when 
models do this and it actually leads me on to believe oh yeah you also get photo etch unbelievable isn't it I, mean, I don't know how they I don't know how they make a profit I really don't um, we get tricky parts have molded on Zimmeret and this is actually really really good and it makes me wonder why they didn't just go for it and mold it on now they do the king tigers and they also do a couple of tigers they don't do an early but they do a mid and a late and you get the same sort of zimmeret which we'll get onto in a minute which is more or less unique to hobby boss well it's trumpeter that do the tigers hobby boss do the king tigers all right let's not mess about come along jason we're better than looking through plastic bags aren't we these kits aren't to be collected and never built we're going to be getting into these let's open it right there we go so there's the molded on zimmeret on the not quite mantlet and not quite gun barrel so it's the section between the two it's on that uh, we've got it on the machine gun housing again for lack of a correct term the german term anyway i can't speak german so there we go nicely done nice and irregular ridges as well in the middle which are all things to look for so that is what happens and on the rear hatches so that's good stuff then the actual zimmeret that we get is plastic card which is as i say um i haven't seen anyone else do it like this i've seen decal sheets i've seen sticker sheets but i've not seen this now what we actually have oh i'll just get the oh no i need the i need the backing sheet we won't be able to see it right so what we get now i was a bit skeptical of this at the start because it seems a bit thick but actually on you know on closer inspection i'm not so sure it is that thick i think that's okay i think we can get away with that you know, when you look at the actual sheet if it really was a problem you, you know you can sand this down on a flat piece of sandpaper unusually the pattern is on both sides no idea what the point of that is but um, it's probably going to be better adhesion for having that so that's good um, and one thing you may be quick to notice is the whole sheet has the zimmeret pattern on it so what does that lead us to be able to do is to use all of this for spare bits if we need to make any up we can cut all of this out we can fill in different areas so it should be quite good. It's going to glue with plastic glue. Fantastic um, option is there as well. Because it's very easy to use it uh, like that. So all in all, I'm quite excited to get this get this going. And I think it's going to be relatively interesting to see how it works. And it is, you know, it's thin enough to mould nicely around the turret. No issues. Got all that bend to it. Um, and use a little bit of super glue just to hold it and then the plastic glue to fix it on. So what we're going to be doing with this is we're going to be building the Porsche Tiger with this and we're going to do the other Henschel Tiger, we're going to do our own Zimmeret on that. Now um, the next model you're going to see after this video is this one, so this is obviously filmed in advance. Um, so we're going to roll straight into seeing what this Zimmeret is like. Then we're going to break it up because the thing with this series is I could have just done German tanks. I like German tanks, um, not as much as I did after actually learning about tank warfare in the Second World War. You know, the, the Fantastic Tiger is perhaps not so fantastic and um, etc, etc. So um, I am finding that I've got a much wider interest in... Uh, all types of armour these days so that's one reason and the other reason is it's just a bit boring isn't it you know if I was to just do German tanks especially the big cats um, it's interesting for German fans but it's, it feels a little bit like uh, you know I'd be doing it for the wrong reasons so that's not what we're going to be doing uh, we're going to do a simple scene scene? we're not going to do a simple scene we're going to do a simple scheme which is going to be one of these um, which isn't going to look like this it's all over Dunkelgelb and it's got these blooming great big numbers on it uh, which I don't think we can see for the exposure he's got this 11 
and 12. Let's see if I can make that stand out a bit. There we go. So you've got 11 and 12. And these are part of the uh, group that was sent out in the beginning of Normandy. So that's what we're going to build next. Then we're going to roll on, and like I say, we're going to break it up. So we're going to do a lot of the vehicles that we've seen. A lot of the vehicles that I've just shown you are going to be built, basically one after another, to explore this uh, Zimmerit. But they're going to be broken up with allied vehicles, uh, or different vehicles. And um, even, I think there's a World War One vehicle coming up, plus vignettes. So the next section of this series should be very interesting. And just as we're rounding off here, uh, something I haven't mentioned, there's two other ways to uh, apply Zimmerit, which are fine, I just don't have them in-house, in, uh, in literally. There are decal sheets uh, that a few companies do, Meng included. Now, they are more haphazard, so a lot of the things I've shown you here are, are generally straightforward, simple to use, and effective. From what I've seen with the decal sheets, um, Unless you do it really well, they do look like decal sheets. It does, doesn't look great, and it, um, my experience of it, it, it actually peels off quite easily. So I'm going to avoid decal sheets at the minute. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you've had good experiences, and it might be something I'll look at. Um, and also you've got the sticky sheets from Tamiya, and they look the worst of all of the options. Um, probably not quite as bad as etch metal. Again, etch metal is another thing. It's just too rigid. It doesn't work for me. Um, so it's not something I'm going to explore. There's no point showing you something that's not worth doing, is, is my concern. I would say probably the sticky sheets as well um, would be a last resort. I think it would be, if you really can't do it yourself, and there's no resin alternative, and there's no moulded on, then get a sticky sheet. But really... There's no, there's no reason not to be trying it yourself, I think. It's, it's simple enough. So as I say, we'll get into that in the series. So uh, hopefully you'll join me with that and we'll get it done. So a little bit different with this video. We're not, it's not a build video, but as I say, next week we'll be straight into this one. Hopefully get it all in one video and get it finished. And then crack on with the next thing. So as always, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, please let me do, know down below. If you uh, like the video, please consider giving it a like. If you haven't already subscribe to the video if you haven't already please consider subscribing to the channel there's a couple ways you can help the channel in the description below and as always thanks for watching stay tuned and i'll see you in the next video